All right, welcome to another video. Uh, my name is Michael. This one is going to be about how to record your guitar, acoustic guitar, or even electric guitar uh, in Logic. And this is for complete beginners who really haven't even used Logic before. So we're going to start from the basis with what equipment you're going to use, how you're going to open up the app, how we're going to do it, uh, and I have a checklist. So I want you to go in the description right now and check out the checklist that I've created. Follow along on my screen. I will also have the checklist up and this is going to walk you through, there it is on my screen, uh, this step by step so that you can pull this up later, save it to your Google Drive if you want by clicking file, make a copy, change the name of it, choose what folder you want it in, and then um, you click OK and that will put this um, set list in your computer as well or on your Google Drive if you have Google Drive or just click file download. So uh, getting into it, let's go through my equipment first, what I'm using here. I have a MacBook Pro 2020 uh, with the M1 chip. This is great. I, If you have an older computer, maybe five years old, with what we're doing today, you could still use it. Probably with several tracks, you could still record with it. There's things you could do to change it, such as having uh, latency changed a bit in Logic. We'll, we may go over that a little. Uh, so we're gonna look at, I have this Scarlett 2i2 USB interface. I have a Taylor 414 CE guitar that's over here. The Rode NT1 condenser microphone, that's right here. Uh, and then this SM58 microphone that is plugged into the USB interface to record the audio as well. Right, so first we're going to, uh, also one thing to mention is the signal path. So let's go through this together. Looking through here, here's my checklist. All right, uh, I'm hopefully I'm gonna set this mic down, but hopefully I still you can hear me well. Okay, so there's the ring light, mic signal. What do the people mean when they talk about signal path? You're creating. Here's the input, right? I'm inputting signal into the mic. It's going through the cables and it's going into the USB two-channel interface, right? And you can see the levels. Here's the gain knob, pre-gain. It's set pre. Um, pretty high, right, For because this is a, a regular dynamic microphone uh, and it's pretty close to the 10 there from zero to 10. Uh, you can see the one lighting up on the left, that is the condenser Rode NT1 microphone. It's, it's uh, about one o'clock. This one is at uh, about four o'clock. And um, you can see I have the 48 volt uh, button pushed in and that is for that is providing phantom power, which provides additional power to the Rode NT1 microphone for the condenser mic. Some mics will need it, some won't. Figure out which whether your mic needs it or not. You can look do a quick Google search. Uh, now this needs to output somewhere. It can go to the speakers, and it all goes. And it also goes to the MacBook Pro. It goes to the MacBook Pro via USB connection, and it's connecting to a dongle here. J5 create dongle and then that's plugging in. Here's the uh, power cable for the MacBook plugging into my computer with my notes up for the video. And then you have these two Yamaha speakers here and here using TRS cables. Uh, the cables are plugged into the back of the uh, USB interface. Uh, quick note on the cables, TRS stands for tip ring sleeve, which is similar to XLRs in the way that they're built, which are, they're quiet, they're protected cables with um, protect, taking out the electricity, or sorry, electrical like noise that a typical maybe instrument cable would have. Instrument cables are shorter, XLRs can be really long because they are so quiet. Uh, so we're using a TRS to TRS, meaning that's representing what each side of the connection is. Maybe you would have a use for XLR to TRS, uh, depending on what's on the back of your speakers and your uh, USB interface. Uh, going in, that's the signal path. Now let's talk about opening the project. Here we go. Let's follow the checklist, super easy. Open new project. Let's go to the Logic app here. Click this. Okay, let's see, and we can ignore those errors. I use templates and I would recommend that you save a template for yourself or several when you set up some key 
uh, you know, set us up some like nice tracks that make it really easy. Like, say you're a guitar player, singer, songwriter, and you sing and you play acoustic guitar. Set up those tracks. It uh, can be um, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then next time you open up Logic for, so you have an idea right away. You can just do guitar and vocal um, uh, preset, right? So let's open Empty Project. Click Choose. Here we go. We're faced with this. Choose a track type. We're going to create a track. Okay. We are going to do guitar. Um, actually, no. Sorry. We are going to do audio. Why are we doing audio instead of guitar or bass? So audio, meaning audio signal, like a microphone signal, um, that's going to be what audio means. It can be vocals. It can be acoustic guitar. Uh, with the acoustic guitar, sure, maybe your acoustic guitar is electric. Um like, uh, I don't know, electric acoustic, right? Where it plugs in to the acoustic. That's really only for live scenario because you're using the pickup of the acoustic. If we're recording, you want to capture the sound, that great sound of the body of the wood guitar rather than just what that um, a, a pickup is inside of the guitar, okay? So we're doing the audio. Now, if you were doing electric guitar or bass, you would click guitar or bass. And then you can see here, look at the audio input. Right now it says no input. We are going to do input one. This is referring to the channels on the USB interface, right? So we have one and two. I know that my Rode NT1 microphone is plugged into one. That's what I'm going to be using right there for recording my acoustic guitar down there. Okay. And the audio output will be one, two. Okay. That's meaning your interface has USB in and USB out, meaning two channels in, two channels out. Those two channels out are stereo left and right out of your computer to your USB interface to your speakers. Okay. Um, let's see. Click audio input, create. Now we have a channel. We can make this bigger on the right hand side right there. See that dial on the right. Now you can see the signal. Look at the green signal down here. It is hitting around 18 check 12 check nine. I would say nine to 12 negative nine to 12 in this case is pretty clear uh, a good signal to have. I can Check one, check. See, go up to eight. And if you click this button, it will reset the signal. Um, you know, maybe I'll even turn this a little higher. Honestly, I, I would get up to six. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Um, and for guitar, what we can do, if you look on the left panel here, you will see acoustic guitar. You can click a preset, natural stereo. Um, we got input one there, natural stereo. You can see the two left and right. Uh, if you look here, you see the R for record. That's record enabled. So it's ready to record. If I turn that off, it's it's not going to record. Okay. It's recording this channel, right? If I had two channels and I clicked it on this one, it's recording this one for record enabled. Okay. And the I next to it is input monitoring, meaning when you record, you can hear what's being recorded in real time you can hear that being played back now think about this this is how feedback happens is when you have input monitoring on and you're not wearing headphones and the speakers are playing back what you're hearing check one two okay so what could have been an issue even right now is i had the speaker volume about like 12 o'clock um which is pretty loud for mine and i could probably hear that back so it could have fed back Okay, so the idea is to have the, the volume on the speakers all the way down, plug in your um, headphones into the USB interface so that you're hearing the signal and it's not going to go out of the speakers into the microphone and create that feedback loop, right? So we're going to now, um, we're going to record guitar. So grabbing the guitar. Here's the microphone. Let's see if I can get this lower. Okay. There we go. Here's the mic, right? Um, 
Notice where the mic is to the guitar. I have it. Let's see. I want you to put it at tw uh, the twelfth fret, straight line. We'll have eight uh, around eight inches to twelve. Okay. You have it closer to the guitar. You're going to have more um, low end. You have it further away. It's um, not as much low end. You have it towards the body of the guitar. It's more this more um, rounded sound versus more towards the bridge. You have a more um, tingy sound, I think you could say. So really there's no right way to do it. However, I've just by default tried to keep it around eight inches from the 12th fret of the guitar and it's angled towards the sound hole. Okay, and it's had great sound for me. So we are going to now record. Click R to record. Check one, click R, okay. And it's gonna be like this. Okay, we get the point. So now we have wavelengths that we can see on Logic. You click the space bar, it will stop and start recording. Okay? So, I click the space bar, you can see in Logic here, we can play that back. Careful when you turn up the volume that you don't uh, have your mic feedback. Now for the wavelength, I like to typically hit this wavelength button, wavelength zoom, it shows like larger wavelengths, you can see the... Uh... Now one thing that you don't want to have is all of these wavelengths at the top, the very top. That would mean it's clipping and that your signal is too loud. You want to turn down the gain knob so that it doesn't have that. In fact, try to play maybe the highest volume part of this section that you're recording and if it's starting to do orange or green or red colors on your interface or you're starting to see those colors on the input and the input's higher than like negative six, then you should be turning that down, right? What's gonna happen is if you do go too loud, it's gonna clip and distort and it's not gonna sound good. Um, in fact, on like older recordings, um, there's a Journey song which I actually heard, I, Lights, I believe, uh, there's clipping in the vocals and, um, uh, Steve Perry's vocals, which is interesting uh, that they didn't set the proper uh, input gain. So um, Now we have this let's go back to our checklist that I haven't really been following we've created the audio track We've selected the input dis uh, We've discussed uh, my settings as well Let's quick note by the way is your input look at the uh, preferences at the top click on logic pro preferences click on audio this box pops up here where it is there it is and you want to make sure that your output device is your interface which is mine in this case is the Scarlett 2i2 USB and the input is Scarlett right that's important that we're recording from the right device uh, and we're se sending signal to and from the right device um, let's see turn all plugins off with the preset I like to do this uh, when you're recording and you're playing back something I personally like to hear the raw sound and hear all the imperfections. Singers like to record with the reverb, I get it. But I like to just, here's raw, turn everything off. You can hold this button, you click once and you, you, you click once and you scroll all the way down, turns everything on, scroll all the way, click once, hold, uh, move down on all of the plugins. These are plugins which have different, you know, compressor, EQ, delay like a guitar uh, pedal board, right? Uh, so then we turn all those off so we can hear the raw signal of the guitar, record with headphones, we got that. Uh, we've adjusted the input settings and logic. Consider your recording environment. Of course, like when you're recording here in this little room, it's actually, I need to like soundproof it better because you have a bunch of frequencies bouncing off the walls, right? Instead, what you wanna have is this soundproofing a little bit we have uh you want to have like um 
especially for lower frequencies to have a bunch of buildup in frequencies, more density um, and uh, length in the sound soundproofing, right? So for example, this like cheap Amazon stuff that you just like this thick, if you had it much longer over four inches uh, with density in the materials that you're using, that's going to absorb, especially those lower frequencies that will typically get through the walls. This absorbs like higher frequencies around 1K, which is where the voice is and higher than that. Uh, those don't tra travel, you know, much through walls anyway, right? And then um, you got the input gain. I already said that. Six to nine. That can really go on one line. When you're recording, before recording, actually, you want to adjust the tempo, right? So go up here. Here's a few things you want to adjust. Click in the center, double click, actually. Um, oops, okay, right here, and type in the tempo. If you don't know the tempo, use a tempo um, like BPM app on your phone to tap in the tempo. You know, you can even do it in Logic, I believe, somewhere here. Um, figure out what that tempo is, what that number is put it in there uh, into Logic and make sure you do that before you start recording. I also like to put the key. Say for example, if you're using Auto-Tune or you're using different instruments or uh, I mean um, MIDI tracks where you're assigning um, piano and strings and different things. It's helpful to just have the key so Logic knows what key you're recording in. Uh, and the of course the count, 4-4, four, four, whatever it is you're recording in. Click on off the count. One, two, three, four. See that little icon there? Click that on to hear the click. There it is. Sorry. This one is one, two, three, four. That's the count in. So, for example, when you start recording, you click R or, uh, yeah, you click R on your keyboard to start recording, and it will do a four count in. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Notice how mine did two counts, uh, two measures in, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, record. You can adjust that to have it record, uh, to have it wait two measures before starting to record by going up to the top and clicking record, count in, one bar, two bars. See that? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So I did two that time. Okay, good. So we've got the metronome on. Um, to take the metronome off or click, same thing, uh, you can also click the K button. That'll really take it off really quickly. K, take it off. K, back on. Okay. Uh, let's see if our checklist has anything else. Choose your favorite take. This is the final thing with recording here um, that we're going to discuss is if you go here and you record, let's see, let's record over this track that we just did. All right, check this out. Take one and take two. We have two takes now that, that have been recorded over each other. Cool thing is, maybe you like part of take one, you wanna do part of take two. You can also move this here and say, I like this second half of take two, right? And then also logic is actually automatically fading take one into take two so that it kind of sounds like it's together and seamless, right? Uh, and then it's going back into take one. And you can see those levels to make sure that they're about the same. Now, if the levels are different, this is um, outside of this video, but like you can adjust, oops, the gain right here and scroll that up or scroll that back down to make the levels of two uh, tracks the same or higher or lower. See, this one's lower, you can make that higher. See that, how the wavelength is getting bigger. The wavelength is a represent, uh, representation of the volume of the signal, right? 
Uh, so that's it on that side. Choose your favorite take. Um, you can w click on the A. You can select the takes. You can flatten, which actually will consolidate uh, the take that you've chosen and get rid of everything else. I try not to do that. I try to create a separate track called extras. Sorry, uh, a separate one of this. I would click command D, which duplicates this track. And then I can also um, move this down here and just I can call this like extras, right? And this is all my extra takes that I had. And then I can have like my main like lead guitar like that. You see that? And then I would put everything active here and then it maybe I have like four guitar, whatever, right? You just like different, um, you know, harmonies and, and melodies and things. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful. I uh, hope you liked this. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out all my other videos I have, kind of everything guitar music related that I just find interesting that I think you guys would enjoy. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. See ya.